All right, everybody. Good morning and welcome to our Connect webinar. Our, you know, occasional, I guess. We, we've gone, it looks like, to a, a monthly format at this point. Um, webinar about the Highway 14 project. I'm Dan Cunningham from Forward Janesville. Thank you all for logging on. It's been about a month for me since I've been on one of these webinars. I was on vacation in early June, and I continue to be amazed by the progress uh, that's been made on the project. Things are looking really good. I know Lance has got a lot to tell us, um, and Mike Jacobs from Rock Road Company. So I would turn it over to them and uh, take us through it, Lance. How's it going out there? Yeah, actually, obviously, we couldn't be blessed with any better weather than we've been getting around here. And uh, because of that, we've made some uh, amazing progress um, that uh, is keeping us right on track to to be on hit all of our deadlines. And, and I might as well jump right into um, showing you some pictures. That's the best way to let's see here. There we are. Can everybody see that? Not quite yet. So you might need to uh, share a screen with me. There we go. I think that's my mistake. All right. Technology. It's, it's been three weeks, so, you know, I forget <laughs> anything I, I used to know. Right. We're good. Okay. There we go. So uh, Highway 14 is under full roar right now and this is one of Mike's uh, accomplishments that he did yesterday actually. Mike uh, do you want to give him a little heads up on what we uh, probably uh, give him some heads up on staging and what it takes to actually get that 48 inch pipe uh, through through the project. Mike you out there? There he is. Oh can you hear me now? Yep. Yeah I got you now. Awesome. Okay. So yeah, they, I, I, like Lance said, um, the project has staging, which means we have to do things in parts. Um, and at Pontiac yesterday, we were crossing with the uh, mainline storm sewer, which is 48 inches, um, which as you can imagine, we don't have a whole lot of play in that. So we had to expose both ends of it and um, they didn't quite line up. So there was some forethought by Batterman, uh, which, which helped a lot. We had another structure made, um, which helps us turn the pipe a little bit. So in order to get the, the mainline storm sewer, which obviously is important back online, we had to put a big six by six, uh, six by six structure in there to line the pipes back up. And kind of the cherry on top was that we also were working around uh, a, a water main, which that was night work that happened earlier in the week, had to get that out of the way before we could run the storm sewer in there. So I guess long story short, um, we are connected now. Um, it, it was a lot of work, but that's part of uh, stage construction. So we'll move forward from there. Yeah, I don't know, Mike, can you guys see my cursor on the screen here? Mm -hmm. Right there next to that big uh, box Mike's talking about, that is actually the water main that serves most of the east side of Janesville there. And anyway, that tried to get any McDonald's or Taco Bell after nine o'clock the last three nights, we're out of luck because... Uh, Mike actually had to lower that water main. It's right next to that. You can see the corner of it there. That had to go down four feet uh, to accommodate this new storm sewer. So uh, that, like Mike said, it's been a long three days, basically 24 hours a day for, for three days here to, to make all that happen. Wow. And the really crazy thing, looking at this picture is uh, we've got exactly, that, that was yesterday, and we've got exactly 12 days to get traffic driving right here. And I'll show you all the stage pictures coming up. As you can imagine, the next 12 days being driving on that, that, that's what we have to do to make our deadlines. Also in that same intersection, we're pouring all the curb and gutter. This is uh, this will be your future left turn lane to get to Olive Garden here, right where this Lycon truck's sitting. So that was poured yesterday as well. Uh, also some exciting stuff. What's, what's really gonna be great out in this corridor is that we not only have this future sidewalk this is where our, our new joanne fabrics and pet smart is anybody that remembers where the bus stop was was right here that used to pull over on the gravel shoulder uh, to get to drop off the bus people so this would be a new bus stop here so not only do we have this sidewalk you have a five foot bike lane on this side another five foot bike lane in the road on this side and a 10 foot bike path so for pedestrian reasons this this corridor is going to be pretty awesome once it's done 
Um, this is over at Farm and Fleet, um, making some great progress there as well. This is uh, anybody members that entrance to Farm and Fleet that will go back in here. And this is a uh, curb and gutter island that'll be separating the main Lexington with the Par Farm and Fleet parking lot. So like I say, over the last three weeks, uh, just just amazing what these contractors have, uh, have, have accomplished. This is over at Deerfield Drive. Again, our goal is to get traffic. Uh, it's, it's tight in there now, but we've actually able, been able to eliminate a few stages to keep it moving even quicker. So that is an overview of Deerfield Drive. Here's one a little farther out. Uh, as you'll see, I'll show you some plan pages here in a couple of minutes that shows. So our goal is on the night of July 5th and July 6th, traffic will be using this new pavement. So once we move traffic over here temporarily, we'll get to working on all of this here on the north side. Give you some quick overviews. This is uh, the northbound ramps at I-39. Again, our goal is to get traffic on this section here on July 5th and the night of July 6th. So it'll be a full closure of Highway 14 on those nights. I'll get some warning out to everybody. And then after August 23rd is when we'll come back and make these ramp connections. This here is down at Pontiac Drive. This is Mike's manhole he was just talking about. This is a picture from just this morning uh, after that has been backfilled and Mike's finishing up a little pipe work in the corner here. And once that's done, you'll see the concrete in that uh, intersection get poured right quick over the next 12 days. Again, this is our Lexington intersection uh, coming together real quickly. It's, uh, like I say, the pedestrian accommodations are gonna be amazing once we're done here. And just a little info on this end of the project. Per plan, we weren't gonna replace any of that concrete because this thing was designed like six, seven years ago. And in over six, seven years, the potholes uh, were terrible and the state agreed to uh, construct all of this so next so there wouldn't, wouldn't be any disruptions or bad pavement uh, moving forward. I know we're trying to keep time frame on track but I thought I'd so, show you some plan pages uh, for our goal of July 5th and July 6th again is to shift all of our traffic out of this new pavement here so this will be a temporary bi-directional this is what it'll look like at Pontiac Drive so Chick-fil-A is here You'll make your, your left turn to go towards TA this way. And again, there's our new bus stop. So goal is to get bi-directional on that half. And then once these cross hatch areas is where we'll be working over the next month and a half between July 6th and August 23rd, our goal by August 23rd is to get traffic open through Highway 14. So these are a couple of the overviews of what it'll look like on the night of when you wake up on July 7th. Uh, you'll be over on this new pavement. These are the, the southbound or the northbound off ramps and on ramps at I-39 here. And again, uh, this is what Deerfield Drive will look like uh, on the morning of July 7th. So with that, I'll turn it back over to Dan. That's great, Lance. Thank you very much. Uh, a ton of tremendous work has been done, obviously, by, by all the men and women working on this project. And, and we commend you very much for for the work that's been done there and and not only that but it's again I, I'm always impressed by how remarkably well these projects are staged I mean when you go back to the interstate construction and and all the years of that and and the DOT and you guys do do a great job frankly of, of keeping traffic moving and and this being as, as minimally disruptive frankly as it can be so I have a quick question then I'm going to turn it out for questions from anyone else in the audience so are, are we on are we on schedule at this point? Are you guys, uh, I know that hot and sunny weather has probably helped out. So uh, you guys on, on track to be done with this uh, complete uh, end of August then for the, in terms of having traffic back on 14? Yeah, we are, like I say, doing very well schedule wise. And uh, if in fact there was ever any hitch to the schedule, unfortunately Mike and his crews will be working Saturdays and Sundays, but uh, we'll, uh, we'll make it happen. What happens in, in July or um, in August 23rd is you will get through traffic on 14, but you will continue to see work in the medians and on the ramps. So between August 23rd and November, you'll see all kinds of finish work, uh, ramp work and all, and all that sort of thing. Come August 23rd, there'll be 21 day closures of 21 days for the northbound ramps closed and then you'll use the 26 ramps and then 21 days for the southbound ramps after yeah. August 23rd. Okay. Yeah, that said, it's it's interesting. Summer seems to be flying by at this point. Uh, really, 
it's just here we are at the end of June and, 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 you know, it's just flying by. So I don't think it'll be very long. And then, then, so again, uh, July 7th is, is when we'll be on the new section of, of concrete there. Okay. That's, that's the goal. Gotcha. Yeah. So actually the, the morning of July 6th, your eastbound traffic will already be on the new pavement. And then come July 6th, we'll, that night, we'll get the westbound traffic onto the new pavement. So it'll take two nights to move it over. Let's see. Very good. Any questions from the audience? If so, just please unmute yourself and, and we'd love to see your face too, uh, if you'd like to start your video. Anybody got any questions? I see maybe Sarah Iverson Smith is down in the down in the Bra you know, the Brady Bunch box of <laughs> uh, the Zoom here. Things going well at Farm and Fleet. I'm, I'm curious about uh, local traffic and, and impacts on businesses. So anybody got anything uh, they'd like to ask? Now is the time. Otherwise, everyone just on listening. That's a good deal. That's a good deal. <laughs> no news is good news, right? I guess so. I guess so. I mean, it, it, do you have any, Lance, do you have any concerns or anything? I mean, it, it, things seem to be going pretty well. Uh, any any roadblocks potentially or potholes to use some uh, road metaphors there that you see in the in the future? Or you know, I will, I will give credit to um, our local utility companies. Uh, Highway 14 is just jam-packed very complex facilities when it comes to fiber optic alliance uh, electric and gas and throughout this entire project there's basically something in the way every day if not three times a day but all our local utility companies have been johnny on the spot and made the adjustments and, and again a huge thanks to them because a utility delay can really really put put a problem to the project schedule but uh all of our local utilities have been just great on on getting that stuff adjusted for us that's great to hear that's great to hear any questions from hey, the group hey dan i got something quick go ahead um you touched earlier on the staging on the project and i mean lance will never take credit for this but i, I mean the the fact that you mentioned how, how smooth this is going it, it shouldn't be taken for granted that that is if not completely, it's in large part due to Batterman's management of the job. I mean, it, this the, the, the easiest way to put it is it's not as easy as Batterman makes it look. Yeah. And they're, I mean, they're, they're as good as they get. And it, it's, it, it, it really is complicated and, and, and they do a great job. So just something that, I mean, that you mentioned that it shouldn't be taken for granted how, how good Batterman is at, at managing this project. Oh, I, I couldn't agree more. I mean, we've been dealing with projects like this. I mean, when you go back to the interstate construction for, for the better part of 15 years, and, and it's remarkable. It is absolutely remarkable. And, and you guys deserve tons of credit because you really do, the, the impacts on the public really are as, as minimal as they can possibly be. And we know that you're working <laughs> complicated stuff here, and this is not easy to do. So Kudos to, to everybody who's working on this project. But yeah, it's been, I, I couldn't agree more. It's been really, really well staged. So good job, guys. Really good job. Well, and, and a lot of that goes to you guys as well, Dan. The community outreach on this project is something that should be modeled going forward for any project in any city. Uh, the outreach you guys have done has made it so everybody's on board and, and they get it. And uh, the, what you're doing with this helps people understand. So it's hard to, unless you have these bird's eye views of like we're showing here, it's hard to tell just exactly how much is actually going on, you know, but uh, good. Thank you, Mike, for the credit, but we've had a great working relationship with our contractors uh, that has made this, this whole process uh, come together beautifully, actually. Yeah, these overhead photos do help a lot because when you're driving it, you kind of take a look off, eh, what's going on over there? This, this helps a lot. And then, okay, now we've got a, now we've got a bird's eye view of, of what's actually happening and yeah these these are very helpful certainly so yeah we appreciate that as well it's always good to get these aerial shots so uh kudos to you guys do you have a drone that you use for these uh lance or yeah we do we got uh five or six certified drone pilots at batterman uh this one my our top pilot is ellen subak she's a, a native to janesville <laughs> Um, and she she uh, she can do amazing things with that drone. Not only take pictures for you, but that thing can actually calculate volumes of piles. It, it, the technology is quite something. And Ellen uh, Ellen is one that should also be thanked because uh, she's she's a huge part of of this 
the comp complex stuff on the ground and the scheduling as well. Yeah, she's great. <laughs> and another note before we go here, I mean, the signage, I think, Christine, I don't think is on rebel from the uh, the Convention and Visitors Bureau, but the business signage has been very good. I think it's been well received. It's super easy to follow and and, uh, and notice where the businesses are. And and so kudos to Christine for getting those up and, and all the work she did there. So it's been, been very good. So with that, we've reached 945. So our next one of these calls will be on Friday, July 22nd. So take a bit of a summer break and Man, oh man, between now and then, I can only imagine the progress that, that will happen on this. So thanks, Lance. Thanks, Mike. Uh, everybody who's worked on this project, we appreciate your work so much. And we will see you all in a month. So take care, everybody. All right. Have a good weekend. You too. Thanks, everybody. Thanks.